Hey guys, it's Liz from Blue and Hazel and welcome back to my homeschool channel. Uh, today I just want to update you on what it's been like to use uh, Primary 2022 and pros and cons and um, how my son likes it, how I like it, and just kind of an overall update. We're currently using 3A right now. We just got to that um, with my third grader. My hope is that we will make it through. We started with 2B at the beginning of third grade and um, then my hope is that we will make it through 3A and then possibly, depending on the timeline, tap into 3B. Um, I'm not really sure. So I would be really happy if we finished the year uh, with 3A. It looks like this. So this is what we have for um, that we're using right now. You can see I've torn apart all the pages inside of here. It's blank because um, I like to chunk those out week by week. and. Um, I stick them in a filing system that we have for the year, but if you don't have that or don't want to do that, you could just pull out one week's at a, worth of work at a time. There's a teacher's guide as well, which I don't believe is what um, is very user friendly for homeschoolers. I could be wrong on that, but um, the home instructor's guide is made specifically for homeschoolers. So we're using a different curriculum for my second grader and my kindergartner that I actually like way more. It's called Math with Confidence by Kate Snow. And it is like such a breath of fresh air for non-mathy moms, um, for anybody who just wants to be told exactly what to do. Um, it's, it's really different than Singapore math to me and it's way more fun. Um, I'm kind of sad they don't have that for my third grader out yet. Um, they will eventually come out with a new year every single summer. But right now, as of the time of making this video, they don't have the third grade out. And um, even if they did, I'm not sure that I would put him on it because I feel like he just probably needs a little bit more. Um, math with confidence is said to be kind of like middle of the road type of um, math curriculum and Singapore is kind of said to be a little bit more advanced. And I can see that being a parent who uses both. Um, however, they're really, really similar in the way that they teach certain things and the math base that it gives your kids like the number sense and breaking apart numbers and regrouping by you know fives and tens and um, using 10 frames and just visuals and they're very very similar so i could do a whole video on just comparing them if you'd like and um but for this video i really want to focus on just the pros and cons of primary 2022 and um starting with just a few things that i like about it um i like that it's easy to plan like I said, um, the home instructor's guide has really super clear, easy to follow, um, like what you do each day, what you do each lesson, the pages of the student book that you're supposed to use, like page 115 through 118, page 119 through 122. It's just really clear, whereas the US version was super unclear. You didn't know how much to do each day. So I do like that about this a lot better. I like that the worksheets are really colorful and visual and probably two to three workbook pages a day is what we're seeing. And that is more than my daughter gets with Math with Confidence, which is a front side, back side. Like my son will say, how come she doesn't have this many worksheets? And it's like, well, sorry, <laughs> you know, but, um, but honestly, there's not a ton of problems per page with, um, primary 2022. I do use the home instructor's guide to, um, kind of glance through like, Hey, is there anything that I I've been missing as far as like how I'm supposed to be teaching him a new concept or like, how does it, um, like, does it have any hands-on activities about this that I should be doing? Um, but overall, like, my son really, I, I'm learning this about him. He really does enjoy just like doing stuff on his own. So the problem with the home instructor's guide for me is that it's super, super wordy. And um, each lesson there'll be like a bunch of different questions that you're supposed to ask them to see, um, to, like to help them walk through understanding a concept. And um, he kind of just wants to like go do it. And especially if he already gets how to do it. He doesn't want me to like drill him with a bunch of understanding questions. So we're figuring out kind of how to use the teacher's guide still, like how much of it I'm using. And honestly, I'm not using it as much as I feel like I'm supposed to. And I hope that's okay. <laughs> um, everybody uses Singapore math really differently, I'm finding. And so 
um, some people like probably would go through and ask their kids all of the questions in a lesson. The teacher's guide, I don't know if you can see this, but um, they do have what parents can ask their kids in bold and they have these little thought, like this little comment bubble right here. And so you can kind of see like you're, you're supposed to ask under this section, this section learn here corresponds to the section on their workbook page that says learn. So it's really easy to follow through the home instructor's guide and their lesson. But um, for example, the question would be, what are some different ways to describe your picture? And then answers that they might have. And then how would you find the total number of objects? And then they give you their answer. And then how is the number line organized? How does this help you count? What do the jumps represent on the number line? So it's having you basically lead them to the answer. And so that's one thing um, I notice over and over again with Singapore math, at least this version, is that through questions, they're having you lead the kid to the answer. I don't think that I am like secure enough to in my math teaching skills to not buy the home instructor's guide. Um, some people I know don't buy it um, unless they feel like they need it. And uh, I just kind of feel like, oh, what if, you know, every time, what if I get to a lesson where I need help or probably gonna need some help, in, you know, remembering how to teach certain things that I don't remember learning. Bar models are gonna be really huge. Like I have no experience with those. So I just feel like this is my security blanket, even though we don't use it a ton. Um, there's also extra things inside of the home instructor's guide that, you know, could be helpful. Like the teaching tips that it has, um, It'll have these little teaching tips here, like remind your student that every, even though the fact says five groups of three, the numbers can be swapped to find three groups of five, um, and the answer can be found by skip counting by five. Um, and then it says you may wish, wish to ask these questions, which is faster, counting by threes or counting by fives, which takes more effort. So just like little teaching tips along the way that might help you know how to talk them through learning something. But honestly, I find myself not using a lot of these um things because my son is just like i got it mom bye <laughs> and so at some point like when he gets to spots where he needs help he'll ask me and then i'll go through and kind of look at like how i can describe that to him or how the teachers got or how the home instructors guide would describe that to him but i don't necessarily start every lesson with the home instructors guide doing every question it says i just don't so um yeah that's just me being honest i guess they also have the answers in the home instructor's guide. So as math gets harder and you don't wanna like mentally figure out if their worksheets are correct, it's really nice to have all of the answers just written right on the side here. I like the uh, heuristics. So this is something that's new to 2022 that wasn't in the US edition. And they're just like deeper thinking problems um, where you have to use multiple ways to solve things. And there are a few activities, but overall I find there's a lot less hands-on activities. We definitely don't do hands-on stuff every lesson. Um, that's just touching now on some of the things that have been not my favorite about this curriculum. Um, as a parent, I don't notice really any complaints from my son. Um, he seems to be doing just fine with it, so we're just gonna keep going on. A minor thing is just the size of this uh, honker right here. It's it's just so big, you can see the size of it compared to like a regular textbook. I don't know why they decided to make it this huge. Um, unfortunately, it just doesn't fit on a normal shelf or my homeschool card or anything like that. Another thing that is just a little hard for me is um, there's just so many words in the Home Instructor's Guide that it's easy to just kind of get lost in what you're supposed to say or do or what's way too much. And um, I wish there were just less words and more pictures. This could be a pro or con for you, but there's not a ton of like, explain it this way or explain it this way. There's a lot more questions that you ask them that lead them to the answers. I do wish that there were more pictures inside of here. Like the home instructor's guide doesn't seem to have a ton of visuals. There are some. Another small annoyance that I have with it is that all of these little tiny pictures are things that you're supposed to grab throughout the lesson for different activities that they have um, or different visuals that you're supposed to give your kids. And I find myself not using them um, because I don't want to log into the online system and then print out the paper. <laughs> it's just like such a pain. Like, why don't they just 
put it full size in the back of the book like they did with the US edition. I don't know. But I've noticed we've been skipping stuff because I maybe just don't want to go find it. You know, we have other resources that I already own too that we can use. Like I don't necessarily need their number cards. I already have some. Like I have a 10 frame from Math with Confidence that we can use. Like I know how to draw a number bond thing if we want to use this. Like um but there are some things that, you know, I probably shouldn't skip and are just really inconvenient to get to. And I just wish it was a little easier to snag that and that you didn't have to log in online. Another kind of, this could be a pro or a con. I'm figuring for me, it's a little bit of a con actually. And that's the mastery and beyond. Um, this is considered a core component. Um, well, you wouldn't do mastery and beyond in addition to the student book on the same day. Um, I mean, you could, but it'd be a ton of worksheets. And it'll be part of the schedule in here that I mentioned um, to tell you when to do the Mastery and Beyond pages. So we're doing math five days a week, but we're alternating like every few lessons it'll have you do a Mastery and Beyond review, which covers like review from the last few lessons. And so um, we're just moving at a little bit slower pace. And sometimes I have a hard time recognizing if we need to do those pages or if they're like just redundant and my is you know it does my son seem to be grasping it or do I need those pages and so um, we've kind of been doing them this year um, last year we didn't use them at all and we went faster and this year we're doing all of the mastery and beyond pages and I feel like we're moving a little bit slower and so um, I I think um, at this point, I probably won't order them again for next year um, unless I feel like, oh, we need more review. And I kind of just feel like if he's understanding it, then let's just skip that review every few days of like the past few lessons. The other thing I was going to mention is like a few of the um, things that are like extra in the online um, thing that you get when you buy the home instructor's guide is like a year a year of um, something called extension or also reteach and we just don't use those first of all i don't want anything i have to log in and like go find extra stuff second of all i feel like it would just zip, like suck the joy out of math to have to do more math on top of what we're already doing and um if you're doing this well or using more singapore resources than just like home instructor's guide and the student book um, please drop me a comment just how it's going like any tips that you have to make it through without you know dragging out the lessons and um, kind of my fear is like going super duper slow can either be really boring or it can also just make you start to feel like you're getting behind where you could be if you're adding in all this extra stuff or alternatively I don't want our math days to turn into 50 minutes long per kid like that's just not the direction I want to take math. And some, some Singapore math families that I see on the Facebook group are spending that much time doing math every day with each kid. And I don't, I don't envision that being good for our family or for me, um, especially having eventually four kids that are doing math. I just can't see that ever being a thing. Even with three kids, I'm like, I can't see that being a thing. So my main fear is probably just by not using the extra resources, like, are we doing are we missing out are we you know actually doing singapore math the singapore way and just not really feeling sure about that and so um and yeah just wondering like those questions out loud but um what i'm seeing is that actually <laughs> sorry i got a baby here bouncing around what i'm seeing is that depending on which singapore math family you talk to there's going to be a huge difference in how people do Singapore math. So some are going to use all of the extra resources. Hey buddy. Um, and some are not. Some are going to be using 20 minutes a day and some are doing um, up to like 50 minutes a day with each kid. And some people's kids love math and some people's don't. And some parents love math and some don't. Now some people are going to be using all of the um, visuals and hands-on and some people are not. But, you know, I think Singapore math is supposed to be like teacher presentation first, um, worksheet second. But I do feel like the way that we're using it is a little bit less of um, me teaching 
and a little bit more of like my son wants to just do the worksheets and figure out how to do them and he asks me questions as he has them and then he does get stumped and we will um, try to at that point like stop and teach and look in the home instructor's guide and see okay how do they present this you know we're definitely not using all of the resources we're not spending as much time as some families are but i still feel like he's grasping math really well you know i just like the way that it really has him think and when i compare that to especially with like some word problems and things i'm seeing when i compare that to um, our other math curriculum i use with my other kiddos math with confidence I do feel like Singapore math is approaching a lot of pro problems in a um, just a deeper understanding type of way. And, um, you know, by just asking a lot more in-depth questions and by requiring um, them to think about math a little bit deeper, maybe, especially through like the heuristics and the um, math activities that it has. Anyways, I hope this was helpful for you and Overall, we do like the math curriculum. I'm planning on sticking with it. Like, I like how streamlined it is and easy to follow it is compared to the US version. Um, if you're looking for videos, which is not something that I have experience actually using, but um, the Singapore Math Live videos that were recommended to me don't correspond lesson by lesson to this um, math curriculum. And this uh, 2022 actually has a completely different scope and sequence than um, the US version or any of the other versions like dimensions or anything like that. So you can't just hop from say, you know, 2A of one and go to 2A of another. Um, so those videos don't work with, um, with 2022, unfortunately. But Jessica Kaminsky um, from Math With Purpose, who is also one of the authors of the new series here, she has vid a video subscription area that you can pay for. And while it's not lesson by lesson, it's like um, idea by idea. Apparently she's an incredible teacher. I've not watched her videos, but a lot of people on her Facebook group just think she explains things really well. So that might be worth looking into if you are using Primary 2022 and you really want some videos um, to help teach your kid these concepts. And so I um, hope that helps you out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos.